Hello ladies and gentlemen, a couple weeks back I made a video on my save system and was promptly informed by reddit user redwagon006 that I am a moron. <laughs> um, you should never use binary formatters because they're insecure and cannot be made secure. This is because if someone messes with the data when you deformat it, uh, it can be insecure, I think it's called, I forget what the name is. It can basically run code that you don't want it to run, so you should never use a binary format. So I've, I've found out a different way to do it, and I thought I'd just remake the tutorial going over JSON data and my own other serialization, which isn't a very secure serialization, it's more of a way to obfuscate data, if I'm pronouncing that right. But this is what it does anyway. So when I press load, it loads some default settings in, so this will be like the first time you play. Then I'll put uh, like Armin can be the player, maybe hit level three, and I set my I don't know, strength attribute, whatever it is to that. I press save, it saves it, and then when I close the game and open it again, this time when I load the data, you'll see it loads it all. And we'll get into it now. Uh, if you've seen the other video I made, it's going to be largely similar, but with a few differences. So this is the user script. It's just going into how to use the data manager itself. So I won't get into that too much. So for example, it's just stuff like as a slider and whenever the slider value's changed, it changes this and just updates the attribute and all that. So I'm not gonna go into how to use basic UI functions and there's the increase level button stuff. Uh, what there is, to note is the save and load data functions so when you save it it obviously saves the data and when you load it it loads the data and then sets the UI itself so we won't get into this script that should be you should be able to do it yourself we're just going to get into how the data manager works so we'll go into it piece by piece first things first we have a few file names right now we're only worried about this one so we've got a public constant string settings data file name and you can have any uh, suffix uh, at the end it doesn't have to be dot j g d that was just I forget what it stood for I think I had it like this before as for dot game data and this is the important part the save data struct this is where you're gonna store all your data so for example for this case I have user attribute user name and user level which are being plugged into here, use attribute, name and level. In reality, I could just have a struct there to hold all this and I wouldn't have to do it manually, but we'll get into it. And we'll start with the load settings because it's a bit more complicated. It's not too complicated, but it's done slightly different to last time. So we create a instance of the save data struct and we set it equal to load actual save data. And we'll get into that in a second. And we pass in the file name as I said. So this load actual function can be used by any game. So usually I'd have this data manager be inherited by something else for each individual game. And I'd have instead of load settings, I'd have load game data or load player data or load enemy data or whatever you want to load. You can have a bunch of different ones if you'd like. And then if save data dot equals the default save data, because if uh, this doesn't have if the save if basically if the data doesn't exist it'll just return the default value for save data and we want to check that if that is the case then we will create the data and this will create the default data basically so creating data from default so we want the user attribute to be 0.5 in the middle we'll say the name is new player and the level is one rather than zero and then we'll use the data regardless of whether it's loaded if or if, or if we've created it we'll use the data we'll say data user dot find object of type so it just finds it in the scene and then it plugs everything in and we'll get into that now so the load actual as I said is a generic it returns type T which can be anything and that's the format you put it in so as you can see there it's save data and there's string for the file name and the first thing we do is we instead of using the file name we use application dot persistent data path plus file name and what this does is uh, creates a path for whatever platform you're using so it'll be different on Android Apple Windows it'll give you a, the data path you want to use the persistent data path so you want to put that before 
and that's also why you want to make sure there's a dash there because you're adding it all together creating a whole path so if file dot exists file name then we go into it if not just return default as I said so then it will just go into a create data because then it will be equal to default save data but if it does exist we're going to get the uh, encrypted file because it basically saves it as an encrypted file uh, a, a file of bytes so you do file.readallbytes file name and then json.data and this is my own encryptor and then I'll go into this very briefly encrypted uh, ACS encryptor decrypt blah 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 will basically take this big a file full of bytes and turn it into a JSON data string and then we just do JSON utility from JSON and make sure we pass it as the types and this time we pass it as a save data so I'll turn that string of JSON data into a save data and again the other way around I'll take the JSON I'll take the save data that we pass into it so the data we actually give it once we've uh, filled it here once we've made sure because we have to make sure that everything is filled otherwise it'll say um oh you haven't put the correct number of things so you're trying to use an unass unsigned unassigned local variable so you have to make sure the say everything e every aspect of the struct is full and then once it is you can pass that into the save and it'll save that as a save data into a string and then it'll encrypt that string and then it'll write all bytes so it'll write the bytes to the file so an AES encryptor this is what it started as and I basically just converted it to unity for my uses it's I'm not entirely sure how all the, the AES encryptor stuff works so I'm not gonna get into it the important thing is that it just it takes a key and an IV if someone knows both these keys then they can just uh, access the um, they can unencrypt the data but again this isn't something that you do for like a multiplayer game this is something you do just if it's a local game and they want to mess with the data fair enough this is just a way of hiding it so they don't it's, it's hardest to do basically you, you obfuscate it so it's not as easy to mess around with and cheat but it can still be done especially if they uh, I guess if they decompile the code they could probably see these keys and Hopefully I remember to like change these keys after <laughs> I put this video out. The encrypt string to bytes just takes in a string and returns an array of bytes and vice versa. Decrypt string from bytes takes in a bunch of bytes, an array of bytes and sends back a string. So that's how that works. And once you have all that done, it's quite easy to just pass in the data and take the data out. So yeah, that's all there is to it. Very easy to use, store and load basically any kind of data so long as it, you can serialize it. Just using that system.serializable if it's a struct, you can have structs of structs and all kinds of things. And I was going to get into my own get and set uh, preference methods, but it's more of the same what we've already done. It's just a way to replace Unity's one so you don't have to use like does key exist, that kind of thing. It does it all in one method. But that's basically just um, saving, instead of the save data struct, it saves a dictionary of strings as keys and then objects. So you can save any single object with ease on the fly, which is quite useful. But I'll put all this data up on the Arm and Dust Off website so you can look over it. Hopefully it's well commented. And yeah, hopefully this helps someone out. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.